Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us today, both in person and online. Today's discussion is our third installment of BCLC's monthly Conversations with Stephen. Thanks very much to our, our live studio audience. Um, today, I'm joined by Richard Crispine, who is the founder and uh, I guess founder is a good enough title sure. for the mm -hmm. Corporate Responsibility Officers Association. So Richard and I and a number of other folks have started to develop this conversation about, well, what are the fundamentals? What is needed to be done and where are we going uh, in this space? And this report, uh, which just came out, the state of, of the corporate, respons corporate responsibility profession, is the beginning, actually, of a series of reports to try and move the field forward. Medium-sized enterprises and B corporations and individuals who are interested in pursuing a career in corporate social responsibility. And one of the questions that we frequently get asked is, what, should, what kind of skills, what kind of talents, what do I need to do to get a job in corporate social responsibility? So Richard and I and a number of other folks have started to develop this conversation about, well, what are the fundamentals? What is needed to be done? And where are we going uh, in this space? And this report, uh, which just came out, the state of, of the corporate, respons corporate responsibility profession, is the beginning, actually, of a series of reports to try and move the field forward. Now, before we turn to Amon for the news headlines, what I was hoping that we could do, Richard, is provide a little bit of a brief overview and background about what we're going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. You write for Forbes and, mm -hmm. of course, CR, CRO Magazine and a bunch of other places. If you were going to write the headline and the, the story about, about your findings, in briefly, what would it look like? Well, I think the headline would be that without action, the field of corporate sustainability is itself unsustainable. There are structural weaknesses that need to be resolved, and those principally lie in the areas of creating more research and more uh, educational capacity so that people can learn these things and can know that uh, there are a defined set of knowledge, skills, and attributes that define the profession, that define the individual professional, and things that they need to know in order to be effective in their jobs. And then there needs to be a sufficient body of research to back that up so that businesses and employers can know that they're hiring professionals who know the right things and can bring those things to bear in an effective way in the market. You know, uh, if you look at, at the key findings that we're going to be talking about in more depth as we, we move forward, you say that this is still um, a nascent profession. Mm -hmm. it's, still, it's still just in its early stages. It's not fully d established as a deliberate career path. You're saying that there's a dearth of educational capacity. You're saying that, that corporate responsibility professionals may be averse to taking risks. You say that they're ambivalent about the development of their own profession and that they are, quote, disturbingly apathetic. Mm -hmm. Are you a hater? <laughs> uh, once in a while, my own self-loathing does uh, come out. But no, I'm not, I'm not a hater. I'm uh, hoping to uh, put a, a mirror, you know, an, an honest and, and, and uh, true mirror to, to the profession. I think, that, I think that a lot of what this, this report is about is about tough love, and mm -hmm. it is about looking at the mirror. Are these your own findings? I mean, or where, where are these things coming from? Yeah, that's a great what's question. The, what's the background behind the report? Sure. This is actually part of a, of a multi-year study and a set of efforts on the part of the association. Uh, we have a professional development committee that's made up of currently serving corporate responsibility professionals. And for the last uh, three years, they've been dedicated to unearthing what constitutes the profession. And they uh, went out and talked to all of their different peers and, and uh, colleagues to assemble a set of knowledge, skills, and attributes and a set of job descriptions. And we published that last year in a guidebook to structuring and staffing the, profe the, uh, the function. And then this is a second phase to the report and to that study. And we interviewed, and you can see actually on page 22 of the report, a whole cross-section of different folks 
uh, from, from the business community as well as from NGOs and from, uh, from, from the academic community and combine that with a, a market demand survey that we did with, uh, with the American Society for Quality. Uh, so it's a really it's a multifaceted study. Yeah, so this isn't, this isn't the world according to Richard Crispin. No. This is based on a broad range of interviews of, of a wide, from a wide range of folks. And electronic survey. And yeah. electronic survey, et cetera. Well, fascinating. I think that we've got a lot to dive into here today, and I'm <laughs> looking forward to this particular conversation a great deal.